Hi everyone and welcome back. In this quick video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your Tascam Model 12 as multi-channel audio interface into Steinberg's Cubase LE11. The Cubase LE11 is the most limited edition of Cubase and demonstrating in, in this very limited edition, if it works here, it will work in any edition, including AI, Elements, Artist, and of course the Pro. There are a few steps I'm going to assume that you have completed. One, that you have already installed the driver for Tascam Model 12 on your PC, and you have also set up Model 12 in multi-channel mode, and of course you have a USB connection between your Model 12 and your PC. I do have a playlist on my YouTube channel that includes a lot of information about the Tascam Model 12. If you're not familiar with the Model 12, I highly recommend you watch that playlist. I will leave a link in the description and possibly a card above because that will help you to understand the mixer. And understanding the mixer will make it really easy for you to understand how to set up your Cubase or any DAW. To put simply, the Tascam Model 12 in multi-channel mode allows you to send the 10 analog inputs plus the master left and the right into Cubase and also receive 10 outputs from Cubase back into the Model 12. I have Cubase running. I'm just going to create an empty project. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the correct driver selected so that Cubase can talk to Model 12. And to do that, we go to Studio, Studio Setup. I'm just going to select Audio System first. As you can see, our ASIO driver is currently selected as Generic Low Latency ASIO. Now yours might be different, but to correct it, I'm going to click the down arrow and then select Model Mixer. Your list may not look the same as this one, but Model Mixer should exist in the list. So select that one and then select Switch. So now Cubase should be talking to Model 12. Let's double check by selecting the Model Mixer ASIO. And here we can actually see our 12 inputs, 10 analog inputs plus left and right. And scrolling down, we see 10 outputs. Now to make things easy to, uh, to see when we are setting up our projects, I know that input 11 is our main left. I'm going to rename that and main right. Makes it easier to set up in our project. Cool. We've done our first step. Let's click OK. Now that we've established communication with model 12, let's set up our audio connections. To do that, we go to Studio and Audio Connections. Audio Connections is another way, a virtual way, to connect buses, inputs and outputs, to physical connections, physical ports, inputs and outputs. This layer of Audio Connection matrix allows you to set up your project tracks, inputs and outputs easier because you can name them to things that makes sense to you. Here we have a bus called Stereo In, left and right. That's by default connected to Model 12 Mixer and input 1 and 2. Now I'm going to change this to input 7 and 8. Why? Because 7 and 8 on the Model 12 is a single fader that controls left and right. And I can even rename this Stereo 7 and 8. Now I can add more buses. This time I'm going to add six of them in mono because we have six mono channels or on our Model 12. I'm just going to call it Input and Edit. So now we have input 1 that's physically connected to the input 1, input 2, and so on. 
and then I have 7 and 8 as a stereo. Now you can also add 9 and 10. Now if I try to do that, let's add input 9 and 10. Unfortunately, that won't work. That's one of the limitations of the LE that won't allow you to add more than 8 physical inputs. If you have the AI edition, then you can have up to 16 inputs. And I believe the Elements Edition has 32 inputs and outputs limitations and so on. So in case you keep trying and you've got the LE Edition and you cannot add it, that is the reason. Now another great option, as I mentioned, renaming buses. Let's say my input 1. Just going to name that my, my guitar and my vocal mic. As you can see, now I can give names to buses or input buses to the physical ports. Of course, I can also have multiple buses connected to the same port. Let's say my input 6, I don't use it. I can always connect to the input 5 as well. So input 5 and input 6 buses, that's what they're called, are both listening to input 5. So I could set up two tracks, select one as input 5, another one as input 6, and they will both record the audio coming from input 5, physical input 5. That's just additional information there for you. Next, I'm going to select the outputs. By default, we have stereo out that's going 1 and 2, which is all fine. I would leave that as is, but personally, I prefer my main stereo output from Cubase to go to 9 and 10 on model 12 simply because I've got 9 and 10 as one fader and I can control that stereo fader up and down instead of using two faders of channel 1 and 2. I'm just going to add here stereo 1 I'm going to call it out 9 and 10 and here I'm going to select that to be 9 and 10. Again, the limitation is 8 ports, but because I'm only using output 1 and 2 and 9 and 10, makes it really easy. So that's pretty much all set. Close that. Let's add a track, an audio track. I want it to be a mono one. I can either select from my hardware input directly or I can select from my named one. Let's say uh, this is going to be my guitar track. That's what I've got connected. So I don't even have to worry about what channel it was connected because that's what uh, I've configured it. So that's my guitar. And whether I want that to the stereo out or out 9 and 10. And let's call this guitar. So let's add that track. Keep that dialog open. Next, I want to record my vocals. So let's select my vocal mic. Mono again, going out to 9 and 10. Vocals. Add the track. And next, I want my keyboard connected, which is connected to 7 and 8. Stereo, going out to 7 and 8. My keys. So now I have three tracks. Just open up the mixing console. So these are all our inputs. That's our tracks. Our input output channels and the stereo out. So we can certainly turn those off so we can actually just see our guitar, vocals and keys. I need the stereo out, and that's out 9 and 10. I do have a microphone connected to channel 1, even though it says guitar, but I'm just going to turn it on, and let's monitor it. There we go. We can see the signal going up, and now we can record on channel 1, and we should be hearing it as well. And we are ready to record. I can hit the record button and start recording. And just a final note, 
As you've noticed, I selected out 9 and 10 as my main output instead of selecting the stereo output going to 1 and 2. And now all I need to do is set my 9 and 10 channel on model 12 into PC listen mode switch and turn up my 9 and 10 fader then I can listen to the playback on my speakers or on my headphones instead of using faders on channel 1 and 2 and then panning them left and right. That's the advantage of having output 9 and 10. Of course you can also use output 7 and 8 because that's a stereo fader as well. There are plenty other options where you can have multiple outputs so you can listen to a mix on your monitors on the mixer with the fader 9 and 10 you could, but you could also have a sub mix that goes out to fader 7 and 8 on the model 12 that feeds into the sub output into a headphone amplifier to the artist or the vocalist that's recording that will have a different mix but that's a topic for another video. If this video was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And if topics like this interest you, feel free to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one.